as well as some things that you can possibly uh, fix if you have done those things in 2013. Um, just a couple house cleaning items. I wanted to let everyone know this webinar is going to be recorded. So for any reason, if you have to step out early or if you um, have someone that is coming in later that you know is going to be attending, uh, feel free to let them know as well as um, yourself that you guys are actually going to get a copy of this in an email in about a day or so, um, possibly tomorrow, I would say. Um, anyone that has registered will actually get a uh, recorded version of this webinar. So um, again, if you have any kind of questions regarding any topic that I do discuss during the webinar, feel free to hold off until the end. I will do a question answer uh, portion at the end of the webinar. This should only be about a 30 minute webinar. It's going to be a short one today, but again, we're going to go over the five mistakes that people have made in 2013 and ways that you can either fix them or ways that you can make sure not to make those same mistakes in 2014. Um, so again, today, uh, my name is Mike Garcia. I am the Associate Integrated Marketing Manager of iMatrix. And these five topics are essentially the ones that we chose out of multiple amounts of topics that we saw, um, or five reasons and errors or whatnot that people made in 2013. Uh, these are probably the top five that we found uh, came up the most, uh, the most common, I would say, errors that were made in 2013. Um, Course number one being a flat, outdated website. If you have a website, that's great. That is definitely something that you want to have. But again, if it's something that you're not updating constantly, um, you know, people pretty much first thing that they think of is that you're out of business and you don't uh, tend to the website anymore. Um, usually that's kind of how it works. A lot of times when people see a website that's outdated, um, if it's got information that's outdated, they kind of lose. Uh, the business themselves kind of lose credibility. They think the people that are looking at the website think that um, that business don't know what they're doing, that they don't know what they're talking about, or that maybe they're just not in business anymore to uh, update the website. So website is a huge portion of uh, what people see your business as before they actually see you, their first impression. Um, so it is very important to keep it updated. Um, incorrectly using social media, that's another thing. Um, if you have social media but you're not really using it correctly, you're not using it consistently, again, it's as important as your website itself. So make sure that you're using both of those in tandem and you're updating them accordingly. Uh, not showcasing your business at all. Of course, you know, if you're not promoting your own business, that's a big thing. People aren't going to find you. Um, there's no neon sign, um, you know, on Google Map just directly pointing to you. Um, people need to know that you're there. If you're a new business especially, it's great to promote it word of mouth, friends and family. Um, offline marketing in any sense, if you have flyers of, of some sort, if you're at a local store or, or anything like that, you want to let people know, hey, you know, we have a new business up around the corner, feel free to check us out. Maybe if you have some kind of new special offer going on for, for you know, a grand opening, something like that, that definitely will help out. But you need to pretty much showcase your business, let people know that it is there. Um, so that way it kind of starts the momentum going. You could have a great website, uh, but you might have no visitors at all. Again, that does happen when people don't showcase their business. It does happen when people incorrectly use social media. Um, if they don't update their website, let's just say it might look great, but it's just not updated. Uh, all these things kind of work together to, to help your marketing strategy um, going forward. And again, uh, last but not least, following outdated SEO practices. Of course, uh, this is something we'll go into a little bit more, but um, you know, if people are continuing to struggle with their, their ranking and they don't know why and they're using really old tactics. Keep in mind that Google is constantly changing their algorithm, constantly changing the way things are done because consumers are getting smarter and um, not to say everyone tries to play the game differently, but there are people that do try to do tricks and different things and ways to outrank other competitors uh, because it's a very competitive market. If someone's number one in Google and out of uh, you know, the first page is about 10 results, the, the search engine results page, um, anywhere between 7 to 10 results, I would say. Anyone that's within 5 or even higher or, or a little bit lower, they are, everyone below number 1, they're trying to get to be number 1. Even if you're number 2, it kind of irks you. You just want to be number 1. So you're going to do whatever you can, not necessarily meaning that you're going to do the wrong thing to get to number 1, but you might continue to follow things that got you to number 2 or to number 3. Well, with Google, they need to continually change things because they need to continually change the way uh, people search because people change the way that they search via mobile, um, if they're using a tablet, if they're using Siri, for instance. The way that they're searching, keywords aren't necessarily uh, being used as 
often as what they used to be before in the past. Um, a lot of times people are typing in phrases, they're typing in questions, different things like that. So Google has to keep up to date, and they actually have to keep ahead of the curve with that um, in order to give people the most relevant search results that they're looking for, especially now when people are actually becoming less and less uh, more likely to use, let's just say, a desktop um, to search for something they're using their mobile phones, or they're just, again, speaking into Siri, they're just asking phrases. You know, for instance, a chiropractor, they might not just say chiropractor San Diego or whatnot. Um, they might actually ask a question, where can I find a local chiropractor? Um, so Siri or other, other different types of programs or, or phones or tablets or whatnot, um, any device in general, they'll probably use some kind of coding or algorithm that they use in order to interpret that. And then Google, again, has to interpret that via their algorithm and see what pulls up the most relevant search result for you. So um, again, there's some new practices that are out there. Uh, there's a new algorithm called Hummingbird that's out there that we've discussed before in previous webinars, and we'll kind of get into certain things like that. So again, today's webinar, we're going to go ahead and take a look at those five mistakes that are commonly made. Again, these are common ones. Maybe you might not be using um, all of them, but if you're seeing yourself using one of them, if you can make that change. That definitely will help moving forward. Um, one of the main reasons, actually, to take a look back over last year's mistakes is to learn from them and to improve in those areas. Um, you may already have a marketing strategy in place for 2014, and that's great, but this webinar will give you a brief overview on common pitfalls of 2013. So again, if you look at the different ways people search, a lot of them are using mobile. A lot of people are actually um, using tablets, they're using smartphones. Um, there's about 3 billion searches online um, a day that people are actually using. And when someone searches for someone, again, they could be using a lot of different uh, mediums, a lot of different devices. And Google has to see that. They have to actually see um, out as, as far as, you know, if you, what kind of website there is, if it's, if it's causing a lag when someone's trying to pull you up, um, that's going to be a bad user experience. If, if it ends up being not relevant when someone searches for you, um, again, that's a bad user experience. So there's a lot of different factors that kind of play into that. Uh, one, for instance, with a flat, outdated website would be <clears throat> bounce rate, which, again, if someone doesn't know what a bounce rate is, when someone goes to a website and ends up being something that they didn't want and they immediately leave, or if they don't um, cause any kind of action on that website, they don't click any links, or they don't, they don't go anywhere on the website itself, <clears throat> basically, it was kind of like a mistake. Oh, I didn't mean to click that link. Let me hit back or let me go out of there. Um, that's kind of considered a, a bounce rate. And that actually, to Google, basically means, hey, this person didn't meet, didn't want to go there, or this website wasn't relevant to what they were searching for. Um, there's a lot of things that, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of things that actually can be um, caused by that. One could be page load time. Um, if the load time is way too long, then it's, of course, it's going to cause a bad user experience. They're not going to want to wait, sit there and wait for the website to load, so they're going to go ahead and leave the website. That causes a bounce rate. Um, to go up. The design just isn't pleasing to them. Maybe it's a really confusing design. Maybe, um, you know, with a lot of flash sites out there, um, I know back in the day there used to be a lot of flash websites, and a lot of people like the way they look, but sometimes flashy isn't always the best way to go, especially nowadays. It's definitely not the way to go, but uh, with this poor design and uh, confusing design, again, it's a bad user experience, and so they'll leave, increasing the bounce rate. Um, content, if there's not enough content or the content just isn't relevant, or maybe even if the content itself just um, doesn't make any sense, it sounds robotic, doesn't sound natural, doesn't sound fluid, um, they're just going to leave. It loses credibility altogether. So, um, and then, of course, usability, functionality, that's one of the biggest things. If, again, if it's confusing, um, people just don't want to take the time to sit there and browse around. Now, from my own personal experience using a desktop computer um, or even, let's say, a laptop, um, having a mouse, let's just say, world's different than being on a mobile phone or being on a tablet where it's a lot easier to press buttons and to click, double tap things, um, you know, on a mobile phone or pinch to zoom or whatnot on a tablet as opposed to being on a desktop. A desktop, you can pretty much do anything. Um, but now, again, most people are using mobile phones, using tablets or whatnot, certain devices. And it's easier to just kind of point, click, and get to somewhere as opposed to really kind of navigate and, and sift through everything and dig through stuff. Um, so usability, functionality, um, navigation, if you have a lot of tabs on your website, definitely try to think about consolidating them, 
may be consolidating certain pages together. Um, you know, whatever you can do to, to decrease the amount of tabs that you have, amount of pages, without ruining the content on the site, without ruining the structure overall of the site, definitely think about that because, again, user experience overall with all these four um, points right here is very important. You know, it's, it's something that a lot of people just don't really, they, they overlook, you know, I mean, they don't really think about it. They're so focused on keywords and it's one of those things where you have to kind of think about how someone's going to use your website. Um, as an account manager, when I used to have clients myself, I, that was one of the biggest things that I had to worry about was how is someone going to use the website itself. So, um, you know, you want to definitely think about SEO. You want to definitely think about keywords and content or whatnot. But if people can't get to where they want to get to, all of that really kind of doesn't matter at all. Okay. So some social media files, of course, if you're not posting, that's definitely a big no-no. Um, having a social media profile and not posting at all doesn't really make any sense. Um, you you want to have a social media profile that is active, it's consistent, people can see that you're actually active and posting on it. Um, if for any reason you don't have the time to do that, see if anyone at your office can do it, maybe a front desk, create a calendar. Um, you know, make it so that you don't have any kind of erratic posting. Create a calendar so that, you know, if you do at least once a week, that's fine. Um, it doesn't need to be something where it's every single day. It doesn't need to be something where it's, you know, three times a week or whatnot. Um, just once a week. If you can do it to where, you know, it's once on a Thursday morning or, or you know, Sunday afternoon or whatever it may be, whatever works for you, whatever you think that either you yourself or someone in your office has the capability of doing, just create a small calendar. I mean, you can do it month by month. You can do it week by week, whatever works best for you. Um, it'll actually become world easier if you have a plan going forward. And whether it's you know, just a calendar that says, hey, post something on social media, or if it's a calendar that actually has topics and posts prepared and ready so that you can find them and post them on your uh, social media profile, do that as well. But having something consistent, actually showing posts on your website is something that's very important, it's something that people actually look at. Keep in mind, if someone saw like a blog site and they saw that the blog site hadn't posted anything, it hasn't been updated since 2012, uh, the, what's the point of going to that blog site anymore? And you almost kind of have to think of social media as, as a, the same sense as like a blog site where when someone sees a profile that's not been updated in months, um, they're just not going to go there anymore. They're not going to check back next month hoping, oh, maybe they'll update it again. It's common to see people post once a week. Um, it's common to see people post uh, maybe, let's say, once a couple weeks. That's fine. As long as it's something where it's not a month, two months, three months going by where people aren't posting, um, then it's fine. But just somewhat keep it consistent. Um, posting in proper content, of course, no one really wants to see, uh, you know, personal info, personal uh, issues or, or anything like that happen or post on uh, company profiles, you know. If someone's following a company or following a business, they don't need to see any of that stuff. They just want to kind of know what's going on with the business itself. If something happens personally that affects the business, okay, that's a little different. Uh, but nothing that's, you know, religious, political. This is all pretty typical stuff. This is all pretty common uh, things that a lot of people should know. But in case you don't, just remember that stuff needs to stay on a personal profile. Um, again, if you're not too familiar with social, personal profiles and business profiles are completely separate. So you can definitely have one, post all you need to on your personal, and then have the other for business and post everything um, business related to that, okay? Whether it's events, um, certain sales, uh, you know, anything in general that you want to post on business, that's, that's totally fine. If you're selling the business, let's say, and it's something personal where you are moving or um, you guys will be closed for a while because whatever happened in your personal life, that, that should be fine. But again, something that's uh, improper, definitely I would say would be, you know, the, the two big ones, which is politics, religion, those kind of things that people tend to get offended uh, by if they're not prepared for it. Um, if you have only sales stuff, if it's only promotional things. Now, again, I mentioned you can post promotional stuff, but if that's all you're posting and it ends up just being a, a salesy type of uh, profile, that's something that's going to turn people off too. They don't want to go to Facebook and see nothing but sales. They don't want to see nothing but um, 
you know, promotions and things like that. People get enough of that stuff in their in their email. They get enough spam in their inbox. Um, they don't need to go somewhere, um, which some people consider like a sanctuary to get away from things as far as, you know, Facebook and social media profiles, um, just to kind of take a break from their day. They don't need to be spammed and inundated with a bunch of sales stuff. So I would minimize that if you have some kind of sale uh, thing going on to maybe once a month um, if you can and then have everything else just be um, you know regular postings and, and keep it funny and engaging as well um, but if you're going to do something salesy I would say probably just like once a month would be best um, and of course you know being absent not responding if someone is posting on your profile and <clears throat> let's just say they're asking a question or whatnot um, if if they're trying to speak to you through your, your social media profile that's going to be just as important as someone posting something on your website. That's going to be just as important as someone emailing your business a question. A lot of times people use social media as a way to communicate to businesses. And to be honest, a lot of times new business is made because of the fact that people are asking questions on social media and they get their question answered. Um, keep, keep, someone, uh, keep a finger on the pulse, I should say, on whatever email you have attached to that business profile. Um, if you're going to have a business profile created, have that created through an email or, or add someone as an admin from an email that is going to be monitored in the office. Um, if you want to have it go directly to the doctor, if you want to have it go directly to the front desk or whatnot, have someone be able to communicate with people that are trying to communicate to you via social media. A lot of times people will ask you questions regarding certain services, certain prices. If you post a special, let's just say, on social media and they ask you a question about it, if you're not responding, you're pretty much losing out on business. They might call you, they might come on in, they might email you directly, but a lot of times people just aren't gonna do that. Um, they'll be logged into their social media via their phone, um, tablet, their their cell, um, their sorry, their laptop, or whatnot. Um, they might do it in those sense, but then again, that's another medium altogether. It's a third party medium. They're not then going to open up their email or they're then going to go on their phone. They might just say, you know what, they'll get back to me, and they they might even forget themselves. So um, I would definitely make sure to respond to them as quickly as possible, and make sure that you're responding. Um, again, uh, accordingly to, to everyone that, that is asking questions as well, okay? Uh, so a lot of businesses did kind of make that mistake in social media. Um, either they didn't set it up correctly or they're using it incorrectly. Um, it is kind of a learned skill, you know, it does take time to get right. A lot of businesses are really excited about social, they'll set up their pages, they get busy, they kind of forget about it. Um, again, it's one of those things where if you don't have time to do it as a doctor, if you don't have time to do it as a office manager, have someone try to help out in the office or maybe assign certain months to particular um, employees and say, you know, so-and-so has January social and then February, you know, Susie has uh, social to deal with and, and create a calendar that way. There's a lot of different ways that you can actually do it so that people can keep up to date with um, social uh, or with the, uh, yeah, your social media posts in general. So there is something called the 80-20 rule, and it's about 80% entertaining and, again, 20% promotional. Now, this is, of course, what I was mentioning, something where you don't want to post something promotional all the time. You don't want to be salesy. You don't want to have it be just an advertisement nonstop. Um, you want to have it be entertaining. Again, it's something that people get away from their busy life. They get away from work if they're on their break and they're on social media. If they if they are having a bad day and they just need to kind of dump their thoughts on something, they'll just kind of go to social media and just kind of uh, look at things and blink out. Um, people don't want to see again and they want to get spammed with a bunch of promotional sales stuff. So uh, the 80-20 rule for social media is a really a great guideline for those new to social media management. Uh, the rule will help your business to remember that people want more than just a coupon or Friday special. They'll want information and they want to be entertained. So share relevant, heartwarming stories, funny memes, cartoons, latest advancements in technology. Um, again, it doesn't even necessarily have to be outside of your office. You can talk about things that are happening within your office that aren't necessarily promoting something about a service or, not, or whatnot that you have. Uh, maybe someone in your office an employee got certified in something new. 
maybe you guys uh, won an award for something, whatever it may be. I mean, you can promote your office without actually promoting something as far as sales. You know, I mean, you can promote your office in a sense that, um, you know, hey, we're having this event happening or whatnot. Come check us out. Um, as opposed to, you know, receive 20% off of massages or receive, you know, $10 off of uh, flea collars this week only. You know, there's, there's a little bit of a difference there. So um, if you want to keep it entertaining, post funny pictures. You can post, again, holidays are great for, for offices. I know for veterinarians, they like to post for, for Christmas and for uh, Halloween, maybe even Valentine's. They'll post pet pictures, you know, or even hold contests where people can post funny pictures of their pet or even, you know, with chiropractors or whatnot, um, optometrists, anything in general will work where people can post pictures on your website, create uh, on your social media, create something that's funny, create like a little contest, you know. Um, you can maybe even offer them something. It's not necessarily in general uh, offering a discount on a service, okay. So there's different ways of actually promoting things like that that will um, benefit your business but not scar it in the sense that people will think it's just salesy. So if you're not going to uh, promote your business, then who else will? Um, keep in mind, you might have a marketing team. You might have a uh, management team that is marketing your practice. That's great. Um, again, that works if, let's just say, you do have a service with us in general, let's just say, um, or if any other company, uh, for that matter, that is promoting your, your business online, that's awesome. That, that's definitely one of the biggest steps that you can take. Um, one of the things is, though, if you are a new business, let's just say, or maybe you're a older business that is trying to rebuild their brand and um, kind of renew the brand, I guess you can say, uh, for the community, or maybe you have, you're an older uh, company that has new locations, um, work in tandem uh, with any kind of online marketing and start to kind of give a word of mouth, um, you know, do things that local, you know, library, Barnes and Nobles, the grocery mart, whatever it may be, have promotional flyers, you know, those kind of things. I always see uh, from time to time if I'm going to the grocery store now, I know sometimes it gets annoying and sometimes people tend to really want to kind of pitch it to you or whatnot, but I always say no or I'll say yes or whatnot or I'll take a flyer. I mean, it, it, there's no harm, no foul, but it does give me kind of a good idea of a new business that's opening across the street. Um, a lot of times people forget to do word of mouth things and, and they think either it's one or the other. It's one side of the spectrum or the other. If I'm not going to do yellow page ads or if I'm not going to do this and that, I'm just going to do full-blown online marketing. Um, that's not really the best way to look at it. I definitely think that the future and, of course, the present is in online marketing because that's where everyone's at. But you shouldn't also forget about, you know, if you want to go ahead and get word of mouth, I definitely would give word of mouth out there. I would tell um, friends and family, have them tell friends and family, uh, family of their own as well. Um, you know, if you have local communities that you, um, that you see every week, you know, local uh, people around your community, definitely tell them about that. There's a lot of ways that you can actually promote your business um, without having to feel like it's taking up a lot of your time. Also get your employees involved if they can as well. It's a great way to kind of help uh, showcase your business because again if you're not doing it and other people around you and your business isn't doing it then it's not going to promote itself there's not a huge neon sign that's kind of promoting your business itself you have to kind of start the momentum for it to really kind of uh, boulder downhill we're just on that slide um, so again some of the best way to showcase your business one of the best ways I should say is video um, Give a guided tour. I would say one of the best ways to showcase your business is a visual video tour. Um, not using online video is a common error made by uh, most small businesses. So video is not cost prohibitive like it was in the past. Many smartphones nowadays come with video cameras. They're about 5 to 8 megapixels or whatnot. Um, so keep in mind, if you don't have a phone that has one of those or if you don't have an uh, employee that has something like that, Feel free to get a camera um, at the store. Not to say that you have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but you can actually get a decent camera. I actually just bought my mom uh, for Christmas a decent Nikon camera. It was actually about 20 megapixels, and it was $70. 
I mean, these kind of things, I mean, I'm sure back in the day they used to cost hundreds of dollars. Nowadays, and it actually takes 1080p video. Um, these things are really cheap now. I mean, you can, if you really want to kind of promote your business and you want to have a decent video without having to buy a huge, um, expensive camera, you could easily buy a, a camera at Best Buy or you could buy a camera at, I got mine at Target. I mean, you know, anywhere that you want to go to, um, if you don't have a phone that produces HD video, which again, I would say about 80% of the video uh, of phones out there have at least 720p HD video, which is perfectly fine. Um, you know, spend maybe a little bit of money to, to get a, a camera and, um, you know, feel free to, to use it for multiple different things. You can use it to record video, take some pictures of the office to post on directories, to post on the website, take some pictures and photos of staff members. There's a lot of things that you can do with, uh, with a camera if you don't have a camera um, that will help to benefit your office, They'll help to actually benefit uh, the business and the website itself, not only on the website, but again, like I said, social media, um, directories, I mean, the list goes on. There's a lot of things that you can actually do to, to definitely help your presence as well as to make your business look a little more professional online. And again, it's the first impression that people see of your business when they're looking for uh, a new service or a new business. They'll look at that and they'll say, you know what, these guys look like they have themselves together. These guys look like they know what they're doing. Um, even if they don't know exactly how your services are, if they've never even been to you before, if they've never heard or seen any reviews or whatnot, that's going to definitely be the first thing that they see is, does this website look clean? Does this office look clean? And the only way they can do that is by seeing actual pictures of the office, of the staff, um, maybe a video documercial of the office, just kind of a quick, and by documercial, I basically it's like a commercial, almost like an infomercial. I mean, they call it a documercial, but uh, basically kind of inviting patients or clients uh, into your business to get to know you, your staff, your services, um, and pretty much what you guys do, how long you've been in service, that kind of thing. A lot of times you can see that, you know, and again, I say commercial because it's kind of like a commercial, but it's not on TV. It's, it's a, it's a documercial. I don't want to say infomercial because it's not selling anything. You're just basically saying, you know, like iMatrix. Hi, welcome to iMatrix. We've been in business for, you know, let's just say 30 years. Uh, we've been helping uh, relieve pain in San Diego, you know, whatever it may be. You know, we, we offer this, 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 and that. We're the only office that, um, business that offers, you know, cold laser therapy. And, um, and basically just kind of go through and, and show the office, show you know, candid videos if you can, or shots of um, people getting you know helped out and stuff like that. Of course, if you want, you can you can ask for their permit, or you, I would definitely ask for their permission. Um, if you involve them in a video, um, definitely if you could have them sign like a waiver form if they they want to uh, not be in that video, you know that kind of thing. Get their permission. Um, I would I would definitely have something on there if it's client testimonials. Again, behind the scenes, those kind of things they definitely will help to drive more traffic to your business because that's the first thing that people see. And again, one of the biggest biggest fouls is having a great website but no visitors. Now, a lot of people kind of think of it like a set it and forget it kind of, they have a set it and forget it mentality, I should say. A lot of people think that if you build it, they will come. That's not, that's not necessarily true. This isn't a uh, field of dreams, unfortunately. I wish it was, but uh, with websites, you have to build it and promote it and basically do everything that I've kind of mentioned a little bit earlier. So um, social media, word of mouth, whatever it may be, just even getting an online presence in general, making sure everything, all the ducks in a row, all your directories, um, your pages have full content, everything is good to go. And make sure that when you build it, when you're promoting it, that when people are going to your website, check your Google Analytics. Google Analytics is free. It's a free tool. Um, if you're not sure how to set that up, we can definitely help, set, uh, help you set that up here. You can give us a call. But it's a free tool from Google, and basically it gives you complete full insight on your web traffic. It tells you where people are coming from. It'll tell you the devices that they're searching for or are from, um, the operating system that they're searching from. I mean, it basically goes through everything. And you can actually see where people are, again, bouncing from, the bounce rate, uh, where people are actually leaving pages, where people are 
going from one page to the other. Maybe they go to your home page, and then they go to About Us. And then from the About Us, they go to your services page. And then from services, they go to Contact Us, and then that's where they stop, because maybe they called the number or, or whatnot. You can actually see a heat map of your website and see where people are clicking on your website. Um, I mean, it's an amazing piece of technology. I mean, Google really did well with, with analytics, and they're increasing it more and more, and they're making it better each and every day. And it's one of those things where if you aren't keeping track of those things, or if you don't have time to keep track of those things, definitely um, find someone who can keep track of those things and manage your website for you. Um, because if you build it, they won't just come. They have, you have to have things in place in order for them to come. They have to know it's there. Because just as an example, and I'm just going to use chiropractors as an example. If you search for, let's just say, chiropractor website, okay? And I know a lot of chiropractors aren't going to just search for a chiropractor website. They don't, uh, well, they probably will search for a chiropractor website. Um, but someone's probably, if it's a consumer, they're probably going to search for, like, let's just say, chiropractor in San Diego or neck pain or whatever it may be. Look at the volume of searches that it pulls up, the volume of results, I should say, that it pulls up. It'll tell you. Now, for instance, let's just say chiropractor websites. As a national company of iMatrix, you know, that we have, we deal with chiropractors. And uh, chiropractor websites is something that chiropractors will look for. That term in general probably pulls up about 28 million results. Now, 28 million results. You can imagine being, let's say, a new website, new business. Maybe it's an old business with a new URL, new domain name, new website, whatnot. It's, it's, it's like a needle in a haystack. If you don't put all these things in place and, and continue to, to kind of work at it and have the time to, that, that you need to take to work at it, uh, social media, all this stuff, there's a lot of cogs in the machine that is website presence, online presence. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen with online marketing for your business. So um, remember, it's, it's not as easy as just having a website and just kind of leaving it there and letting it sit. You gotta have a lot of other things in place. Driving relevant traffic, visits, unique views, page views. There's a lot of different things that you can find in, um, in analytics that will definitely help you to kind of see what's happening with your website as opposed to just kind of shooting in the dark. Because a lot of times people just shoot in the dark. They don't look at their analytics. They don't see what's happening on the inside of, of their, uh, their website itself. And it's like going to the doctor and the doctor doesn't check on you. They don't take your temperature. They don't check your heart rate, your pulse, all that stuff. They just kind of look at you and they say, you know, your skin looks a little more pale today than usual. Um, guessing you've got this, you know, and you're just going to kind of look at them like, okay, you know, it doesn't make any sense, you know, maybe you want to get some blood drawn or whatnot, there's a lot of things to it, so think of it almost like a body, <laughs> if you want to think of your website like that, and there's a lot of things into it, okay, so let's just say you did build a great website full of excellent content, insightful blogs, how-to videos, let's say you did all that stuff, but you're still experiencing low traffic, so Paid online advertising is kind of often thought to be spam by business owners, but this is not the case for all paid advertising. So if you craft a targeted, helpful, enticing pay-per-click ad, uh, it'll actually drive relevant local traffic to your website. So kind of think of great paid ads as well written personal invitations, if you think of it that way. Um, let's say you have all these things in place. Let's say you're doing everything right. You are still not getting traffic. Pay-per-click is probably the best place to go. Uh, because of the fact that those two items, pay-per-click and SEO, work so well in tandem. Um, pay-per-click is something that helps to fuel inject your system. Uh, it, it helps to fuel inject your marketing campaign to, to get you the results as quickly as possible. You could have a really, well, I'm not going to say you could have. Let's say you have a really poor website and you don't have any of these things in place. If you try to do a pay-per-click campaign, and you don't have any of these things in place, and let's say you are being found and you're spending extra money on top of your website hosting fees to be found on Google advertising uh, for pay-per-click, they're going to click on your ad and then they're going to see your website eventually and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I don't know about that. 
For instance, I had to get a smog check recently. I don't know how many of you have had to get a smog check recently. It seems like everyone around me has had to get one recently. But I had to get a smog check. I live in an area that has smog check stations everywhere. I mean, they are everywhere. And basically, first thing I saw was their website. Now, I saw a lot of pay-per-click ads. I clicked on a few. I saw some great specials. Clicked on a couple. And the problem with those is the fact that once I clicked on them and I actually eventually got to their website, I got completely turned off. They had no, they had one single page. It wasn't even a landing page. I know the difference between a landing page. This was one single page, contact info. They had nothing on there. There was, there was no content about anything. Keep in mind, it's only a small check station. Maybe they might do other mechanical repairs. I understand that. But you got to have something on there. You know what I mean? That completely turned me off. 100%. I probably found about five or six of them um, out of the 10 that I saw. So if you work in tandem with those, if you're doing everything correctly, try pay-per-click ads if you're already doing everything right. If you're doing pay-per-click ads and you don't have the other half of that equation, maybe think about doing that. Maybe think about starting to add more content to your website, starting to uh, beef up your social media, those kind of things. It'll all definitely work out in the end. It, it does really, really help out. And so, again, live in the now, live in what's happening now. This is something where a lot of people, again, are falling back to some of the old ways. They think, oh, it used to work for me in the past, and why is it not working for me uh, now? Well, because of a lot of the new changes in the algorithms, a lot of new algorithms that are happening, like Hummingbird, where if people used to remember back in the day, there was AskJeeves.com. Um, which then ended up being ask.com, and Google ended up, I think, purchasing ask.com, and I think ask.com, ask I can't say it, uh, actually is still out there, but what the good thing about it was, and the, the thing that was actually kind of innovative about it was askgs.com was focusing on questions. They were focusing on phrases, not necessarily keywords. They were actually focusing on people asking, how do I do this, or how do I change a tire on my car, or whatever it may be. And it would actually pull up results kind of based on that, on those questions, on those phrases. And so if you think about it, nowadays with, again, Siri, um, Android devices having, you know, um, kind of like a, a, a push to talk kind of thing, or like a question, I don't know what you would call it, you know, like Siri type of service. Um, hands-free service, I guess you can say. Uh, a lot of people, they're not going to sit there and be like a robot and back in San Diego and then have it pull up a result. They're going to say, you know, how do I fix my back pain? Or I have, a, I have lower back pain. Or my dog uh, won't eat. You know, I know a lot of people might have seen, you know, Google's actually pushing it really hard on their Android devices where they'll have a tablet commercial and someone's saying, you know, how do I get home? Um, and it, does everything. It does a little map and it searches for you. It shows you directions. It knows exactly where your home is and where you're trying to get to. And it's awesome, you know. And that's actually what Google is starting to realize. And that's what they kind of come up came up with on uh, their new Hummingbird algorithm. So one of the biggest things that you can do is not necessarily focus on keywords because it's just a little tidbit of info. In case anyone didn't know, for a while now, and I don't know if it's been a year or longer. Uh, maybe maybe two years, I have no clue, but uh, Permac Cuts, which is one of the highest um, authorities for Google, is one of their uh, engineers, Google does not use keywords anymore in their algorithm at all. So Yahoo being those type of search engines, they do use keywords. Um, I would still continue to use them, of course, in your metadata, um, in your content itself. But the focus on keywords is not important as it used to, not as important as it used to be. It's all in the content and the user experience. If your content flows and it's natural, it's going to already have those keywords in there. It's going to have those type of words that people are going to be looking for. And again, if you're a dentist or a chiropractor or whatnot, optometrist, if you offer services that people want, you're going to have that in your content already. You don't need to stuff it with keywords. You don't need to have it continually spammed everywhere. It's not It's not going to help. It might help on Yahoo and Bing, but I'm sure they're pretty smart as well, and they're not going to focus as heavily on it. But I know that Google's just not focusing on keywords. 
Uh, they are focusing on the other metadata in general, which is, you know, keyword, uh, or sorry, um, title tags, you know, uh, descriptions, page descriptions, those kind of things, <clears throat> website structure, user experience, all the stuff that I mentioned before, they're focusing on that. But again, with Hummingbird, one of the great things that you can do to help out your website, if, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not experiencing, or if you're experiencing a drop, or if you're not seeing any kind of rise in your rankings, Create an FAQ page. Create a frequently asked questions page. That's actually stuff that people are probably going to be consistently typing in searches. Um, again, as an easy example, use chiropractors. Why do I need a, chiro a chiropractor? And then give a short answer. I, it doesn't need to be a page per question. Just give a page of maybe 15 questions or whatnot. That, that seems like a good medium. Have the uh, question be maybe a, a sentence and a half, if that. Um, and, you know, uh, can I use insurance at a chiropractor? Or what types of insurance does a chiropractor take? Or, you know, whatever it may be. I mean, these are actually questions that, again, are, are going to be keyword rich and also are going to be relevant to what people are going to be searching. So kind of think of, I mean, if you actually want to have um, someone help you out that isn't in your office, that isn't in your field, Again, ask a family or friend, a uh, family member or friend, and just say, "Hey, give me some questions that you might search for if you're searching for a chiropractor." Um, and then, you know, type them up, and then come up with your own answers. I mean, you're the you're the expert. You're the person that's going to know. Uh, for a dentist in general, you know, uh, do you something about sedation dentistry, or if you want to uh, say something like, um, "Do you offer uh, dentistry for for you know pediatric dentistry or whatnot for for kids or?" Um, what is a root canal or, you know, whatever it may be, something like that. Something where it's like people will actually be searching for that kind of stuff. That's going to help to increase your ranking because of the fact that people will be typing that stuff up and it will pull up on your website. Um, I actually saw a client once where they had a couple questions at the bottom um, or even sprinkled in the middle of their content of specific pages. You know, if it's where you have a page, let's say, for dentists on uh, – you know, root canals or whatnot, or bridges, and in the middle of the page, uh, you know, between the two paragraphs that they had or whatever, they had like a little section where it was like a question and an answer. Um, you know, that definitely would help too. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can actually be creative with it, but that will definitely help um, to, to kind of increase your presence a little bit. Um, again, the user experience is very, very big. I'm very heavy on that, um, making sure that it's navigation the navigation is correct and it's easy to use it's not too hard to navigate through again if they're using mobile or tablets um, get in the Google game understand that Google is a big hitter there's an 800 pound gorilla out there so you want to make sure to please them and if you more than likely please them you're more than likely to please everyone else um, but it's about 80 percent or so or if not more maybe maybe a little bit less maybe 75 or so of the market share that they own um, for search, search engines and of course, being social matters, making sure that you're on social media, making sure that you're using it consistently, and that you are uh, responding to people that are asking you questions or are actually uh, speaking to you on social media. Okay, so any SEO expert will tell you it's fluid, constantly evolving field. A lot of business websites were penalized in 2013 for using outdated SEO practices, um, pretty much like link exchanges, bad content over stuff with keywords. Uh, letting design play second fiddle, those kind of things. So again, in 2014, your SEO strategy should focus on high-quality custom content, great user experience on your site, and engagement with Google tools and resources, uh, resources as well as, again, a uh, active social presence. So there's a lot of things that you can think about. If you didn't do any of those fouls last year, then kudos to you. Keep in mind that it is something that you have to continually work at. Again, I always like to say that it's just like working out, just like exercising. If you slack off, you will pack on the pounds, and your website will do the same. Um, and if you consistently keep at it, then you will stay ahead of the curve, and you will make sure to not fall behind. So <clears throat> if it's been a while or if you're new to it, Again, just like working out, it will take a little bit of a struggle in the beginning, but it will be worth it in the end, and you will definitely see the results. Okay, so I will leave it up for We did kind of go over 30 minutes, um, which is fine, but if anyone has any kind of questions, feel free to post in the question and answer module. 
I'll be more than happy to help uh, answer any of those questions. If you don't have any questions, <clears throat> again, we will have this is recorded. We will have this sent out to everybody uh, that has attended, as well as those that have registered that aren't available to attend today. And uh, we'll probably send that out sometime tomorrow. If you do have any kind of questions on any kind of online marketing strategy, we do have internet consultants here that will definitely go through um, and kind of adjust anything that you need to have adjusted on your website. If you have a website but you just don't have the time, give us a call. We will help to manage your social media as well as we will help to incorporate anything regarding PPC, video, um, advanced SEO, anything like that. Um, we do have Google account managers that are available to assist you and again, uh, we'll be able to help get you kick started, uh, jump started I should say, uh, for 2014. Um, which now is the time since it is January. You want to make sure to get ahead of the curb and uh, make sure to get your presence known. So again, thanks for attending. Um, I'll leave it open for about 10 minutes or so for any questions. And uh, thanks again.